Joe, great to see you here in London again, here at Nikon School. Uh, what have you been up to since we last caught up? A bunch of stuff. And first of all, thanks for the invite back. We always love coming here, and uh, we love coming to London and working with you here at, at Nikon School. Uh, a lot has happened in the past year, for sure. Uh, done a lot of coverages, did the Rio Olympics, etc. Also been involved with with Nikon because you know this has been a big year for you guys as well. New cameras, new flash. Uh, been involved in that and been excited by some of the new technology for sure. That sounds fantastic. The Olympics must have been a great um, great thing to shoot. Uh, you're known as a portrait photographer, not a sports photographer. How does it feel, sort of shooting out of your comfort zone, as, as it would be? <laughs> it's, yeah, I'm not a sports guy. Uh, you know, uh, generally speaking, you know, we had big plans. At Sports Illustrated, I was going to go down and do maybe some portrait acts, and I did get involved in the city of Rio. I spent time in the neighborhoods, and you know, just doing portraiture of people who were, you know, lives were being impacted by the Olympics, but were not directly associated with the games, and that was definitely fun. Uh, but as all things happen at the Olympics, it's bigger than you know all of us. You know, it kind of eventually overtakes you, and so some of those hopes went to the side, and I got involved in more of a hardcore day-to-day -day sports coverage, which was fine by me, you know, and uh, a bit like riding a bicycle, you know, I've, this is my third Olympics, but I had not done an Olympics in the digital age, so that was very much a learning curve and a new experience for me. The last Olympics I did was Sydney, Australia, I was shooting film. So the technology, again, just as an assist to, to the photographer, the updates in autofocus, in transmission, the speed of the cameras, all of that, playing into your coverage was phenomenal, really. Fantastic. You're talking about the speed of the, the cameras there and the coverage. Um, you're shooting now with D5s. What, what is actually in your kit bag? Well, yeah, we've updated. Uh, we have D5s. That's kind of our workhorse camera. Uh, we have D810 still because that's such a high-res, wonderful portrait camera. And then I flipped over to the D500. I brought um, two D500s to the Rio Olympics. And, you know, you might think, Oh, you know, that's not exactly a camera that is, is matched to the events, perhaps. You know, you want to go with the flagship. But I found there were certain facets of the D500 that were fantastic for coverage. As a smaller, lighter camera for a remote, it was wonderful. Especially, you know, you're, you're kind of jamming your remote cameras maybe into a railing or something, clamping it. I found the pop-up LCD to be really valuable in terms of framing. If You know, you literally can't get your head into the camera sometimes. And uh, also to the conversancy with the SB5000 because I did some feature work around Rio, you know, I took, did some portraiture. All of that stuff was really, really, um, you know, helped me, kept me a little bit lighter. And also too, having the crop sensor, I put a 200 F2 onto a D500, I've got a 300 F2. And that in a dimly lit, Olympic venue where you're scrapping after as much ISO as you possibly can, trying to keep your quality good, that was a distinct advantage as well. That all sounds fascinating. You, you mentioned a couple of lenses there, 200 f2, uh, I see you've got a d5 there with a 105 f1.4. Um, what are your favorite lenses? Well, the 200 f2 is probably my favorite telephoto ever. You know, it's unbelievably sharp. And that extra f-stop, you know, um, it puts the, the lens into another world, you know, like you can shoot a 70 to 200 at 2.8 and you know, you get nice out of focus areas, etc. It's a wonderful lens, good workhorse lens. You shoot a 200 f2 at f2, it's, I don't want to be over exaggerating here, but it's almost otherworldly. The sudden drop, you know, the crispness of the focus and then the sudden drop as it tra transports into the out of focus areas of the photograph. It has its own unique feel. I'm finding that translating to, into 105, 1 1.4. Uh, I've always used an 85, you know, but I, I hadn't gravitated back towards my 105 area just because, you know, the 85 being the 1.4 lens was, you know, fast and all of that. But I also felt like I always wanted a little more reach. Now I've got it. You know, I never thought that we'd say 105 millimeters and f1.4 in the same sentence, you know, but now we've got it. It's pretty terrific. Uh, we've been playing with it at uh, Nikon School here and we've been astounded by the sort of results of 105 and f1.4 wide open. It's stunning with sharp lens. It is, and the certainty of focus is really, really good. Couple it with the D5 and I'm finding it to be at 1.4, 
you know, you can, you have to be so careful at 1.4, and the lens is consistently bang on in terms of where you're dropping your focus. So I, I really appreciate that as well. That sounds really, really good. You mentioned earlier the SB 5000s. We've got the wireless control now. Uh, a lot of people have been asking for that for some time. How do you feel that's going to improve your or change what you're actually shooting with the speed lights now? It already has. It already has. You know, because you know, you can always make a light work. You know, you could take an SB 25 and make it work. A flash is a flash is a flash. But at the same time, having this new technology is freeing up. The imagination, I think, of the photographer to be creative with speed lights in ways that would have been more difficult. You know, using uh, you know radios and uh, you know uh, attachments, slave eyes or line of sight, all tried and true technology for sure. But there's certain limitations. There's only so far you can go. Uh, with the radio, I'm finding the transmission to be lock solid. I'm finding the range to be excellent. I'm hiding flashes where. Previously, I'd have to really add another, you know, sort of wrinkle to the production elements of the photograph, put a trigger light on a stand, work that off, connect it with a cord. The facility of the radio is proving to be very economical in the field, saving time. Um, you know, the pairing mechanism is really, you know, you turn them on and they're paired. I mean, it, it couldn't be simpler, uh, I think, at this point. And it's technology I've really been waiting for. Fantastic, that's really great. I saw your uh, recent video with the Key Mission 360 at our new action camera range. Um, the biplane with the wind walker, that looked like a great shoot. Tell me a bit more about that. Oh, you know, you have a strange life as a photographer. I've worked with Gene and his wing walking partner, Teresa, now. I've known them for 15 or more years. They're fantastic, uh, you know, in terms of what they do. Gene is an amazing pilot. So I thought of them immediately uh, when the Key Mission 360 came up and, and Nikon approached me and said, would you like to, you know, play with it and see if you could do something? And so I suggested that as subject matter, and it turned out to be a wonderful vehicle. Not only in terms of you know visual dynamics and this and that, but it was also a good stress test for the camera, because in 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 uh, you know full sunlight the plane is rotating 360 degrees, the camera is shooting 360 degrees, so you gain this entire world of highlight to shadow to shadow again to highlight and then backlight etc. And the camera is just transiting from all these exposure zones really smoothly. So for me. It's an interesting step in, it, we're increasingly involved in video at our studio. So to have this action cam capability and to have had a, you know, kind of a successful first foray, thankfully, you know, no cameras fell off the airplane or anything <laughs> like that, you know, um, and editing it, uh, working with the folks who are experienced at 360 editing, which is also another realm, you know, that we're getting involved in, uh, that was overall fun to do and really educational. Uh, again, sounds great. Sounds like 2016's been a fantastic year. What's 27 looking like for Joe and I? Uh, you know, more of the same, hopefully. You know, we had a busy 2016. I'm actually pretty thankful 2016 is drawing <laughs> to a close, you know, or slowing down a little bit. That's fantastic. And 2017 is already, you know, building. We're, we're busy right through the spring. And, uh, you know, and you and I are talking maybe about doing something next year at, at Nikon School again. So, you know, uh, as far as I'm concerned, we're, we're open and, and to all suggestions. We are going to use 2017 uh, to push more in a definitive video direction, for sure. But tried and true, we'll be shooting assignments the way we always have. That's fantastic. Thanks a lot for your time, Joe. Oh, thank you. It's been great. Cheers.